All right. So we uh, have our texture more or less painted. You know, I've still got a couple of things that need to be fixed. I'll do it, I'll fix it in Photoshop, get rid of this little white here on the corner of the eye and clean up the nose and the ears a little bit. Um, but in general, I, I think I'm, you know, 80, 90 percent of the way there. And the eyes are in, um, though they're not great because there's not enough light on the scene. So one of the next things that we're going to do before we actually set up some proper shaders and materials is set up our scene so that we can uh, properly evaluate those. So we're going to uh, add some lights, add in a camera. Um, but first, before we do that, uh, at least my scene is getting, I'm using quite a few layers. Uh, you can see right now I've got 10 out of the 20 layers in use. And I'm about to add three more layers to that. So it can be tough to figure out exactly what's on what layer and, and tough to keep track of them. So what I'm going to do is there's a wonderful add-on called Layer Management. Uh, and if I bring up my properties, it's under the 3D View section of the add-ons and the user preferences. So make sure that's checked. Save User Settings. Um, and it comes by default in uh, 2.72, the newest version of Blender as of this recording, which is October 30th. Um, so once you uh, enable the layer uh, management add-on in your toolbar, which is T in the 3D view, you've got your layers down here. The Layers tab shows up, and this is your layer management. And the biggest advantage is that you can name the layers. So, you know, if uh, in my case, I've got the body on layer one. Uh, if I go to layer two, layer two is where my clothes are, so I'm going to actually rename that to clothes. Uh, my head is not actually on layer three right now. Uh, I need to do a little bit of cleanup in this version of the file. But I will I'll move this down to that layer, and we will call this layer actually yeah I'm gonna move this to here we will call this call this layer references we got my base mesh on this layer um, on this layer I've got well, my eyes, which shouldn't be on that layer, they need to be on layer one. And I've got some lights on layer six. Uh, on layer 20 is my backups layer. And then on layer four is my head references. It's not currently anything on layer three, so I can delete that. All right, so I'm just cleaning up my scene a little bit before I move forward. So uh, the layer management add-on, you can obviously turn on and off layers. You can name them. I'm just going to call this layers of three for now. You turn on and off layers. Uh, you can decide uh, select everything on the layer or deselect everything on the layer. You could tell everything on that layer to render as wireframe. Uh, move selected objects to this layer and lock all selected objects on this layer. So it's a it's a simple yet powerful and immensely useful tool, you know, especially as your layers start becoming more populated. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera and I'm going to add that camera onto uh, layer one. So I'm going to Go to layer one, hit uh, shift C to center my 3D cursor, shift A, add camera. I'm going to hit uh, Alt R to clear the rotation. Then from side view, rotate it 90 degrees along the X axis and just kind of move it up to about here. All right. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is go to my camera options. And I'm going to set the, the focal length to, uh, let's go with 85, a nice portrait lens. 
Uh, so if I go into my camera view, double tap G, I can move around. You can see what the 85 gets me. Uh, if you go lower, so if I go to like 24 and move it in, it uh, it can get really distorted. So I'd, I'd like a, a longer lens, uh, especially for faces, so I'm not seeing as much distortion. So I got the camera added. I've got a, a decent focal length. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is give the camera a target to point at. Um, let's see. I think everything else is good there. Yeah. So. I need to give the camera a target to look at, so I'm going to hit Shift A and add in uh, an empty, and I'll just do plain axes. I'm going to name this empty empty underscore uh, camera underscore target, and then I'm going to select the camera, add an, a track to constraint, target the empty. And then two negative z and up is y. Okay, so now I've got my empty, and whenever wherever I move my empty, the camera will look, which is exactly what I want. Then I'll move that up to there, uh, and then I can also select my empty and just bring the size down because it doesn't need to be that large. Okay, um, now I've got the empty basically uh, centered on the head because that's where I'm going to be focused for the texturing in the near future. Um, so once I have it kind of centered on the face, I'm just going to hit H to hide it so it's not always in the way. Um, and that's my super simple camera rig, uh, just so I can move the camera left and right and it'll still, you know, just hit G and X and it'll still stay pointing at the face. You know, I can also move it up and down and all of that double tap G and just move it around it will still point at the face so I can easily move it around and have not have to worry about where it's pointing okay uh, the next thing that I want to do is set up some lights uh, and I'm gonna set up three different lighting setups uh, so I can evaluate my materials under different lighting conditions and for each of the lights I'm gonna do it with uh, with just planes with an emission material they're going to be pretty simple, um, but it's a good way to, to get a nice, pleasing quality of light without a whole lot of effort. So uh, in preparation for that, I'm going to name some layers. So layer 7, I'm going to name um, LT, or we'll call it uh, lights underscore zero 01. And I know I've got this lights layer up here, so I'm just going to call that lights underscore temp. And then I got lights. 02, and I bet you can guess that this one is going to be lights 03. Okay. All right. So I've got my layers set up. I'm going to save it. Save often. Save early, save often. Uh, so now I'm going to turn on layer 1, make that my active layer as indicated by this green check. Uh, and then I'm going to go to side view and hit shift A, add mesh plane. Now, when I'm, uh, I'm just going to say this as a blanket statement early. When I'm moving the plane around uh, and when I'm rotating it, I'm going to rotate it in object mode. When I'm scaling it, uh, I'm going to scale it in edit mode uh, because I want the scale to maintain, to stay, the relative scale to stay at one over here. Um, and if I move it in edit mode, the origin is going to stay at the center. I don't want that. I want the origin to follow the plane. Um, so that's why I'm going to do it. But um, it really, in the grand scheme of the thing, it's things. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so the first light that I'm going to set up, I'm going to rotate this and move it up about here. Um, let's see. And let's. Scale it down 0.5. Go to top view. Object mode, rotate it. So it's right about there. Then go to my materials, add a new 
material, change it from diffuse to emission, and set the strength to, let's try 10. Hit Shift Z in the 3D view so I can see the lights. Uh, and I'm also going to turn on my clothes layer just because it's going to look a little bit better if I have clothes. Um, though I am going to turn off or hide my vest just so the my head isn't covered. All right. Uh, now I'm also going to name it. So I'm going to name this um, LT underscore or LT one, excuse me, underscore key. And actually, it's not going to be the key. It's probably going to end up being the fill, but I'll change it later. Uh, and I will call the material the same thing, uh, LT one underscore key. Okay. Now I'm going to go into my side view again and uh, shift A, add mesh plane in object mode. Rotate this one 90 degrees along the x axis. Move it about behind him. I'm going to keep it the same size and add a new material, change it to an emission, and set the strength to, I don't know, we'll try 50. Um, rename this one to LT1 underscore back and the material the same. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to have a, a continuous render so that I can constantly monitor what the lights are doing without having to always go shift Z and undo it. Um, and if I do it in the 3D view, it's going to kind of bog things down rendering on that large of a scale. So I'm going to split my uh, outliner and the top one I'm going to change to 3D view and hit zero to go to camera view. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to in that 3D view hit shift Z so that will render for me. Um, I'm also going to select the camera and just move it uh, down just a little bit. And if I unhide the empty real quick, I'll move that down a little bit too. Just so we're filling the frame a little bit better. And I think I'll move the camera in. Move that back up. Then I'm also going to just move the camera off to the side just a little bit. There, that'll work. All right. Um, so now that I've got that, I can hide the empty again. Now, I don't want the the uh, light plane to be visible to the camera. I want to see the source of uh, the, the result of the light, but I don't want to be staring through a whole bunch of different uh, planes. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to the object properties, which is this cube right here. And I'm going to scroll down, and where it says ray visibility, I'm going to uncheck camera. And now in the camera view, you can't see the plane. So I don't have to worry about it being in the shot. All right, so that's my backlight. I've got my key light. Uh, now I need a fill. So once again, I'm going to go to side view. Shift A, add mesh plane. Rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. Uh, from the top view, I'm going to move it over, rotate it. Go to front view, move it up a little bit. And set the material, new material, emission, strength of 10. See, so that's a bit large, maybe, or a bit intense. Let's bring the strength down to like 8. Five. That'll work, I think. I'm also going to go and turn the ray visibility off on that one and the other one. All right, so that is going to be my first light setup. If I go and look at it on the larger scale, I can kind of evaluate it and see if there's any changes that I want to make. Uh, 
You can also see with better lighting, you can actually start seeing the eyes, so that's good. Um, yeah, I think I might make one change here. So I'm just going to rotate this uh, along the local x-axis so it stays more or less flush and move it so it's a little bit more top-down like that. Then I'm going to change the intensity to 20. All right, maybe I'll bring the fill down to four. All right, so that'll work for the first one. All right, um, I'm going to raise up the back a little bit. Move it a little bit closer, I think. Oh, maybe not. Well, like that, I think. And just kind of playing with values here to get something that I like. There's no real hard and fast rule. I'm just going for a few different options. All right, so I think we'll go with that. Uh, maybe for the first one. That is the key better. And maybe 40. All right, call that good. Uh, I'll do another light setup on layer two. Whoops. Looks like these are all on the wrong layer. So I select them all M and, oh, just deselect, hold down shift and deselect that layer so they're only on layer seven. There we go. Now I can turn off that layer and the lights disappear. Now we'll go to layer two. Or lights two, so it's actually layer eight here. Uh, and I'm going to do some more lights. All right, so for this one, let's do. Again, they're all going to be planes. Uh, they're all going to be basically the same kind of general setup. I'm gonna move this whoops. Move this one over here. Rotate this over here. Now again the the advantage of rotating this in uh, object mode is that now if I want to kind of rotate this down like this because I rotated it initially in object mode, even though it's no longer square on an axis, if I hit R and then double tap X, it will rotate along its local X axis, and it will rotate flush uh, the way I want it to. All right, so I'm going to position this right about there. Going to turn off the camera ray visibility, and then new material emission. We'll give it a strength of 20. Um, no, 15 maybe. I'm going to call this, where is it? It's going to be under P. Call this LT2 underscore key. And the same thing with the material. And I realized that I didn't name something here. This one. This is LT T1 underscore fill. All right, back to layer two. So I got that. Another plane. Scale this one down a little bit. This is going to be my backlight. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. Put it right there. LT2 underscore back. New material. Emission. LT2 underscore back. 
strength of 20. I want to want a real strong backlight, so I might actually go up to like 50. You know, as I zoom in here, I want I want this rim right here to be nice and strong. So I can also move it in closer. Bump up the strength to 100. I think that'll work. Uh, and then I will add in a fill light. Should I add mesh plane? Tab RX90. Tab 7. Rename this one LT2 underscore fill. New material. mission and I'm gonna keep this one pretty low maybe like five set this one to ten okay and I like using planes because they might offer a nice soft quality of light uh, and give me some really nice results so that's why I'm using planes and not spots or anything like that. Maybe make that a little more extreme. Yeah, I like that. All right. So that's the two. And then the third layer is going to be a bit different. Uh, the third layer, I'm only going to add one light. And this one is going to be expressly for um, getting a sense of the subsurface scattering that we're going to do for the skin uh, shader. So uh, shift A, add mesh uh, plane. Now this part is the same. Add the plane, rename it LT3 underscore key. New material, name it. Uh, emission. Huh, right now it looks kind of creepy. Um, you know, front view, R, Y90, S.5, scale it down, move it up. Top view, rotate it, kind of behind. I'll go right, I think maybe, actually maybe like that. And set the strength to, let's try 20. All right, so. Rotate that back a little bit. Again, I'm going to turn off the camera ray visibility. And let's bump up the intensity real high. All right. So I think that gets us to a pretty good spot. If I zoom out here, or we just go to camera view, hit Shift Z. So we've got layer three, which is this light setup. Layer two is this light setup, and actually I'm going to turn off the ray visibility for the camera on that one. And then we've got layer one, which I need to turn down the intensity on the layer one key now that I look at it. to like five yeah okay cool so that's my light setups that's my camera now I'm ready to actually start looking at shaders